I'm just going to show you an introduction to Adobe Illustrator. So if you open up Adobe Illustrator, you will see a lot of times under Learn, they have some tutorials you can actually do on your own. I'm going to take you on this tour of the app. Now, if you open this up and you click on it, let me go back just for a second, close this and close this. Now, if you don't see this here, just go up to the search bar and type in tour of the app. And you'll see it'll pop up here. Now, this can be a really useful tool for um, students to learn when they're just getting started. This tutorial will walk you through and get you familiar with things like the cursor and some of the toolbar functions. So here it says, getting to know the toolbar. The toolbar located on the left contains tools you will use to create and edit artwork. It already has a piece of art here to give you a good sense of how things work without having to build anything yourself. Move your cursor over each toolbar and learn their names and functions. Now, if you just hover over with your cursor, it will tell you what each one is called. We have the selection arrow, the direct selection tool, the pen tool, the curvature tool, all the shape tools. And you'll see here that if there is a little arrow at the bottom, that means that there are tools behind there tucked into the toolbar. So if you ever can't find anything, it's probably tucked behind another tool over there. And then you can press and hold the tool to pick that tool. So you click on that, and then you click and then hold this, and that will give you the tools that are behind there. So press and hold the rectangle tool. If you see a shape tool or other than the rectangular tool, press and hold that tool. That, so I have just clicked on the line tool. If I press and hold, there's the rectangular tool. Any tool with a small arrow next to it has additional tools nested inside. That's what I just showed you. So let's click next. I think we got the hang of that. Exploring the selection tool. You'll use the selection tool often to select and move and resize artwork. So this is the selection tool. The, click on the yellow sun shape and you can move it down here to make the sun look like it's setting. So you just click and drag and the selection tool lets you grab objects. So zooming into details, next you'll enlarge your view of the artwork to move two small figures closer together. So you'll see here there's small figures in this, um, this artwork and if I grab the zoom tool, hold and zoom in, it will bring me closer to that. And I can grab my selection tool and I can move my figures closer together to watch the sunset together. If I select the zoom tool again, I can drag out. Now, one of the things I find beginning students have trouble with because they can't see what my hands are doing are the nuances to clicking and dragging. So if I click this magnifying glass tool, um, let me unclick that. So if I click the magnifying glass tool to zoom in here, I'm pressing down with my mouse and holding it to zoom in. And then if I want to zoom out, I'm pressing and I'm dragging my mouse out. So it's pressing and dragging in, pressing, dragging out. And those are little things that just take some mind muscle memory and practice to get used to. But a lot of times in tutorials when um, a lot of experienced designers are explaining things, we do things like that intuitively and it makes it difficult for new beginning designers to follow because they're so instinctual at that point, we're not really explaining the little nuances to clicking and dragging and pressing versus click and release. So I hope that helps. So we'll go on to the next one here, exploring the properties panel. The properties panel is a central location where you can access various settings and controls related to the task you're performing. So if you choose view, fit artboard and window to see the whole poster and select the selection tool, click on the light blue sky in that shape. So here we go. You can also just double click when you have the hand tool and it'll zoom all the way out and you can drag your artboard. But it was telling us here to go to view and fit artboard and window. And if I grab the selection tool, 
you can see the sky is made up of a rectangular shape behind there. Now I could change the color of that sky to an orange to get a more sunset look, and that's what it's asking us to do. And I did that just with the selection tool. Let me undo. And that was Command Z, if you don't know your key commands yet. Um, key commands are really useful to help you move quicker. Everything that I do with a key command can also be found up in the menu. Um, command Z just sets things back one space. So if I click with the selection tool, hold on to the sky, and I click over in my swatches palette and make that orange, it will turn orange. So moving around your document, the hand tool is how you move around your document. So we're just going to slide over here. It was here in the toolbar nested behind the zoom tool. And then I click over here and I see now I have the sky poster and it's asking me to click the selection tool and drag the sky up into the upper sky. And that's it. That is the first little easy tour of Illustrator. Now I'm going to delve farther in to the toolbar and show you how a few of these things work. But this tutorial is a great place to start to get yourself comfortable. Again, if you can't find it when you click learn, go to the search bar and search for Tour the App. I'm going to close this. I'm not going to save this. We don't need it. And I'm going to have a fresh new document up here. Now let me show you the differences between some of these tools in the toolbar. The shape tool is your best friend. Um, everything you need to draw, you can start with a simple shape most of the time. That'll be our first lesson for, uh, to actually draw something in Illustrator. I will show you how to make something just using simple shapes and gradients and get a pretty advanced looking design. So here we are, we have four squares that I just drew in Illustrator using the shape tool. Now, if I want to pick these up and move them, I use this selection arrow. If I want to scale them, I can also, once it's clicked with the selection arrow, hover over and it gives me options to rotate, see that right there, to scale. And then um, these little points in here will actually curve the edges of a shape. See that? So when you click again, this is a one click to have it selected, just one click. This right here is a click press and you drag it in with your mouse. You can change the colors over here by clicking on the swatches. If you want the fill color, make sure that's on top and fill that in. If you want to get rid of the outline color, you can get rid of that there. And you can make any shape here by switching back and forth between the shapes. And you can layer these, you can delete them, and then you just use your selection arrow to move things around. You'll see here, if you'd like to duplicate something you already made, click on it with the direct sel the selection arrow, hold command and option at the same time, click and press, and also hold shift. So let me let me rephrase that. If you'd like to duplicate something that you've already made, click on it with the selection arrow, click and press and keep your finger down and hold command option shift and that will turn into this double black and white arrow and you will see it is duplicating that shape and I just drag it over to where I want it to go. The reason I hold shift, that keeps it in line. If I let shift go, I can still duplicate, um, but it will go wherever I want. If I want to keep it in a pattern, shift is a, the command option shift is how you can keep it in alignment with that first shape you made. So you'll see here. If I just hold command option, I can move it to the side or anywhere I want it to go. I'm getting off the artboard here, but you get the idea moving along. Now, the, the selection arrow does a lot and you will use that quite often. The direct selection arrow is a little different. It will let you click on certain points 
and manipulate those points within an object or a shape. So if I just want to change this particular object and bring this in, I'm only adjusting this point with the direct selection arrow. You can also hold shift as you click and drag around certain points and then you can adjust just those two points. So if I am clicking, so I grab this point by clicking around that point to make sure it's selected. I click, press, drag it around that point. I'm holding down shift on my keyboard and clicking and drawing the second point. And then I lift, I'm not holding shift at the moment. And if I pull this down, I am bringing both of those two points down in this particular square. Now, if I do the same exact thing while holding shift, it will keep those vertical lines in alignment and make my rectangle tangle in alignment versus if I let go of shift, I can adjust the points that way. Just gonna click undo and start back at the beginning. Same thing for the rounded corners. I can hold down and press and shift and grab these two corners and then click on that little circle at the end and only round those two corners to get you know, the arched tombstone shape that's popular in a lot of things that you see. If I undo and I only wanna do this corner, holding shift, clicking the next corner and then dragging, I can make a leaf shape. And that would be the direct selection arrow versus the selection arrow. The selection arrow picks up the entire object. The direct selection arrow allows you to manipulate certain points on the object by itself. So let me zoom in here so you can see. See these points? Objects and shapes are made up of points and we'll get into the pin tool next. That's in the next thing on the toolbar. And when you're using the pin tool, you are actually adding these points as you draw yourself. Zooming back out. So the pin tool is a great drawing tool. It allows you a lot of precision. It's great if you're tracing or trying to draw your own object yourself. Illustrator does come with paintbrushes and pencils and tools like that, but the pin tool is one of my favorites for precision. I will do a whole video on just the pin tool later on, but I'm just gonna give you a quick overview of how it works in the toolbar. So it's the selection arrow, the direct selection arrow, and then next you have the pin tool. So if I'm using the pin tool, I am clicking a point. If I hold shift, it will line that point for me. I'm holding shift on my keyboard and then click and it'll keep my points in alignment with each other, whether I go up or down. So right now I'm creating a shape using the pen tool. Now, if you were really gonna make a rectangle, you should just use the shape tool for that. But the pen tool is great if you click, press, and drag that shape tool, the pen tool, you will make arced points. And then you connect them and you have a whole shape. Now, if you noticed there, I went from using the pen tool and clicking around to very quickly, without going back up to the toolbar, the selection arrow. How you do that is learning your key commands. So again, click, 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 I made a shape with the pen tool and then I hit command and I can turn it into the selection arrow and I can move that around. It's a great way to move quickly as you're drawing a document. Okay, so we have the shape tool which we already went over. We have the magic wand. I like to keep the magic wand in my toolbar. I do not think it's defaulted in the toolbar. If you don't have a tool that you see here that I have, you can click on those three little dots at the toolbar and all the other tools pop up. I very much like to eliminate tools that I don't use often and keep tools in here that I use all the time. That way you don't accidentally click on something and you always have the tools that you like to use in your toolbar. So feel free to customize that.
the magic wand lets you click things of similar value. So if you look here, if I click on all of these green shapes that I just made, they're all grabbed by the magic wand. This grabs all the red. This will grab the light colors. I just think it's a really quick, easy way to grab things and group them when you're working on a very detailed illustration. Now these are the drawing tools. You can paint and draw and there are great uses for these, but this is essentially like just what it says. It's like having a paintbrush. The text tool, when you add type, you can use the text tool and you just click and start typing. We'll get into typography in another video later, but that is what the T stands for. The T is for type. The scale tool, you can scale with your direct selection arrow or you can click on the scale tool and use this to scale things up and down. Now, if you hold shift, that will keep, let me back up here. Holding shift while you use the scale tool will keep it in alignment with itself versus letting you move it around. And behind the scale tool, you'll find a rotate tool, a reflect tool, and a shear tool. So all of those are for manipulating the shapes. I use the scissors often. The scissors are for cutting a path. So anytime you're using a pen tool or have a shape tool where there's a point connecting, that is called a path. So here I'm making a path. Let me actually turn that into a stroke path rather than a filled path, which means the stroke is colored versus the inside, which is filled. Now, if you'd like to cut a path, you can cut paths in circles or cut shapes in half. And there's several ways to cut and manipulate shapes. I will, again, that'll be in a later video. This is just a quick tutorial of the toolbar. But the scissors can cut those. There are other um, tools for eliminating and slicing and dicing. You've got the knife here where you could just cut it and you see that turned it into two objects. And this is the shape builder tool. So if you have multiple shapes, like you might have here, and say they're overlapping and I actually want this shape to be one, if I use the selection arrow and grab those, the shape builder tool will combine those for me where I'd like them to be combined. See how that works? Pretty cool, huh? Gradient tool. So the gradient tool is for adding gradients to your objects. And you can combine that with the gradient palette over here to get it what, where you want. So if I select this gradient and then I have the gradient tool selected and I can adjust how the gradient works. Eyedropper, if you are bringing in a JPEG or anything from in, for inspiration or you just want to copy another color in your document, the eyedropper is a great tool for that. And you will see it will pick up what I select with it over in the color bar. Now the puppet warp tool, let's see. You saw here if I click on an object and I have the puppet warp tool selected, it will give me points and I can add my own points and this can be a really useful tool for manipulating shapes. And there's all kinds of great uses for this as well. So I like to keep it in my toolbar. Next one is the artboard tool and that is how you can adjust your artboard, make new artboards um, and have access to your working size of your document. Then again, we've already gone over this. It is the hand tool and the zoom tool. So that is the basics of the Illustrator toolbar. I hope that helped. And yeah, you just gotta play around with it and get comfortable and explore and you'll find all kinds of different great uses for things.